So this is a quick demo video uh, just to talk through some of the design work that I'm doing around uh, making Fulcro both less verbose, a little less stringent, uh, require less coupling, uh, just generally make it more composable, usable in other libraries. Um, so first of all, let me just say what I've got set up here in this namespace. I'm, I'm in a workspaces uh, namespace. Uh, this is in the Fulcro repository on a branch. I've sort of got this announced in the Fulcro channel. So you can find references to it there. I've just created in CLJS a pretend server database, some Pathome resolvers for getting various things like users and settings, and the, the current user as a, an anonymous global resolver, being able to save a form, uh, which goes through and uses form diff. You know, there's a nice mechanical way of, of doing that uh, to save a form. I've got something for doing an account resolution. This is a separate like demo in, in the same namespace for doing like a login form. Uh, so there's a login mutation, a logout mutation, finding who the if your current session, like if you're already currently logged in, and then pulling the details of your account if you are logged in. Uh, registered the resolvers with the parser. This is a simple path on parser using connect. I structured it this way uh, to get hot code reload in CLJS so I could change the mutations and resolvers and have the hot code reload just update them. So the parser is an, an external def with uh, an array of, of resolvers and then the app is a def once that uh, calls this guy which can change. So that, that lets my, my remote talk to a server that can hot code reload in CLJS. So that's kind of a handy little thing. And I threw an async timeout here just to make it so that, uh, you know, it gives you the feeling that the server's taking a second so you can see your load markers and such. Okay, so what am I trying to do? I'm trying to make it so that you can use as much raw React without, uh, you know, the, the features of Fulcro UI as possible. So for example, if you wanted to use um, some other uh, wrapper library reframe or what have you, uh, and you wanted to let that be the, the primary renderer, Fulcro actually doesn't care about the atom that it uses, and it doesn't actually watch the atom except for inspect to update the inspect tool in Chrome. It actually uses the transactions to figure out when it should re-render. So when we create an app, that app can be used pretty much headless. So we don't have to ever mount it. It's actually kind of ready to go as soon as you initialize the database. Now, if I'm not going to mount it, the only way I get inspect to work is this line 146. I have to actually tell inspect, you know what, my app started. I'm not actually going to mount it, right? Because in this demo, I'm actually using cards down here at the very bottom. Um, I'm using uh, workspace cards that are just plain React cards, and I'm calling low-level JavaScript React create element on things that are hooks-based raw functions. And so I've created this with Fulcro, where you can give it an app that sets up the contextual stuff so that uh, uh, transactions and stuff work properly. Um, most things work properly. Uh, dynamic routing requires composed queries from the root to work properly. So dynamic routing is never going to work with this. We might write something different that will, but um, that's the basic idea is I can render this thing. I can say with Fulcro, I can tell it that app I declared above, and then I can start doing fun things. So let's, let's start up here with the first fun thing. So I made, it occurred to me it might be, might be nice to have I kind of started with with a, a macro called nc first, not even a macro. This, these are functions actually. And nc, I've got a little REPL running here. Uh, basically, creates a normalizing component that's anonymous, so I can get the query from it. And notice it put all the things in it that I told it to, including the join down to settings. Um, I can ask for the ident of that if I were to give it user ID 34 and it understands, oh, yeah, my ident for users is based on the first ID field it finds. So what this little function does is it walks the CQL, finds the first ID field, sets that as the generator of the ident function 
for the top level component. When it sees a join, it creates another nested. You don't even have to call and see. It just says, oh, that's a join. You probably want that to be a normalizing component. I can just do that recursively. So there's actually a settings component hidden in here that you didn't even have to write. Uh, so you can actually say, uh, get the query of, of user, go down to, let's see how 0, 1, 2, 3, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3. This would actually be 4 now. I changed the query. Um, is that, or is it 3? No, it should be 4. Go from user 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Get user settings. Oh, there needs to be another get query in there, I think. Well, I'm not going to bang on that just to show you that one little thing, but there is a, a nested uh, normalizing component here with that. After I did that, it occurred to me it would be just as trivial. I went to play with forms with that guy, and what forms needs um, is not only does it need the query and the ident, and notice the uh, query now has, where is it? Right here has the form state config added. So that's what this guy does, is this adds the form state. And it also adds, um, if you look at the just base component options of users, it adds the form fields. And notice it added the subform for settings. And if you walk down that query to this node, that normalizing component that's associated with this part of the query has automatically been giving its form fields settings marketing. So basically it's just a naming heuristic. If it's not an ident, so there's an embedded ident, and it's not a UI field, and it's not an ID field, then it must be a form field. So that's why username and user settings uh, got in this one. And if I got down to this, this sub one, I'd see that it has settings marketing as its form field. So that was a fun little realization that we could generate anonymous components that are hook based and this is all the code it took. Like that's that's it. This is and this is the form based one. The one that's not form based is even shorter. Okay, so what I've got that form once I've got that form component, I can do my normal form state add form config, mark the fields complete, but I might want to load it. Well, it, that component acts right. So I can actually use a lifecycle hook in the user form to load the user, do a post mutation to initialize the form and even set a load marker for user that, as you saw earlier, I asked for the marker table, I can use to see when it's loading. So if I come over here and look at this form, and I'll remount it, which will cause it to load, and I'll put some stuff in it and save, and then I'll remount it, which will cause it to load, and you'll see it's still got its state. And it's fully normalized. See settings ID 1, has its form config, it has its settings ID, it has the true false kind of thing, the user, current user is user ID 100, user ID 100 is normalized, yeah, it's kind of hard to see there, it has its form state config and updates course in the correct way. So way less boilerplate and in fact if you if you look carefully here the UI of this form where's the card? Here's the card. Create element of raw react with Fulcro IO, which is a def in, which does a with Fulcro UI user form, which is a def in. Plain def in, like this isn't even a Oh, wait, no, it is. UI user form is interrupt react factory. So this is a real hooks based component now. But just raw function created with a factory for react. Use lifecycle. I can use that user thing that I created up above in load without a problem. I get the normalization route properly. And then I wrote this helper for react use root, which looks pretty much like load, right? So this is, this is pull it from the local database, this is get it from the server and put it in the local database. 
but you see they're the pattern's identical, right? And this is just becomes a root key on the database and load, and so it makes sense to be able to just use a root key on the database. So this kind of gets rid of uh, a couple of problems. When you're trying to first initialize your UI, you may not have a user yet. So you need some way of routing the, the data query and the root is just the natural place to do that. So I was using use tree, use component. I've played with these in other namespaces and it occurred to me that we have an infinite number of namespaces to put on keywords. It really isn't that hard for main components of an application to name a root key that they also have a resolver for, for doing this sort of pattern. And then if you have a component that you want to use that you've already, say, initialized or can initialize at use time, then there's another, you know, use component or use um, use tree kind of helper for that. But this this ended up working out much better this way. So user root ends up giving me the user properties, of course, and then the sub properties, and then I can just look for the load marker. Uh, I can use these raw set values, which are nothing more than helpers that that you know call transact on mutation set props. For me in a more convenient way, update value. So you know it's, it looks very much like a normal Fulcro app in terms of how you use the the actual internals here. And then it occurred to me, well, we have state machines, and now we've got a way to kind of generate actors on the fly. What if we were to actually use that to generate actors on the fly? Now UISM actually uses the component name of the component to find it in the registry um, because we, we can't put the components themselves in app state uh, the state machine needs to keep track of who the actors are so it stores them by component name so in order for components that are generated by NC to work right you have to pass a component name as the you know put that in the component options map which is normally done for you by defsc um, so with NC it can't make up a name for you well it could I guess we could sim one but then who would garbage collect those names um, so we've got this uh, we can generate a login form and a session form as pure data based components store those um, uh, oh I shouldn't have actually stored those like that we had them in remember why I did that this isn't necessary because I've got them in the registry now I can just find them so this was this was something I did earlier that I don't need anymore. Um, but then I can do your normal kind of apply actions, reset the actor idents for the current account actor to be that session actor, uh, reset the actor ident for the login form to be the one I just made up. So now I can do a use UISM, tell it the app, tell it the session machine's definition, which we were just looking at, uh, the name or ID of that that particular instance of this machine and then initial event data and then this returns to me the active state of the machine and the actors um, merge together so actor keys login form current account so I can just pull their props out and start rendering them so uh, you can see I've got a little login form here that's nothing more than a plain function here I didn't make it a even a react based thing uh, that I've got my email where I can set value, password, set value, error message if I have the credentials wrong. Um, and so now I've got this little, you know, bob at example.com, let me in, log in, it shows it's checking, hey, you're logged in, log out. So I've got a full blown, well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a quick hack, it doesn't do everything it's supposed to do on the screen. I'm, I don't even think I've checked the credential part yet. Yeah, it just like it just like lets you in no matter what you type. Um, but it gives you a very clear idea of the power of this sort of let's make a state machine, let's say use that state machine, give me back the actor states and then alright, well I'll hook the rendering up to it by hand now. I don't I don't need to pre-write components to be the actors. I can have the actors be just pure data concepts where I can document what the actors give you back as props and how they work and then you just wrap the UI around them. So um, 
these are pieces I'm working on. I'm trying to see, you know, about how this, how well this is going to compose into regular folk or apps and vice versa. If we want to use DefSCs within uh, these these components that aren't composed to root and folk row, I mean, those should work fine because NC is really just generating on the fly something that DefSC would generate. Um, so that's where it's at.